Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I wanted to do a little announcement here. I'm going to be, I've, I've pretty much, I'm in the process of confirming both of them right now, but I believe somewhere between um, the end of this week and next week, I will have two interviews to put on the channel for you. Um, and I'll give you a little hint here. I said two major interviews incoming within the next week. Um, I'll give you a hint as to who they are. They are, they both created, they both were the creators of a digital asset in uh, one of the, uh, I'm passing by which digital assets they created here. Okay. You just, it's two of the digital assets on the list. And I just passed by both of those digital assets. Two of those guys will be interviewed by me. I will be coming up with some questions um, here in the next um I'll be coming up with some questions here in the next few days to go over with them. It will be interesting because I will make it so. All right. So I'm excited about that. All right. DJ Peter Voss sent me this. Um, there is a, I keep talking to you about the narratives that I'm noticing. Here's one of them. Now, Corey Johnson, yesterday in the ripple drop, David Schwartz went out of his way to talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum not being sca scalable. It's almost like there's there's an attack right now going after Bitcoin and Ethereum. Corey Johnson here, does, he, he also has been doing this. Bitcoin, he put out this little cartoon. Bitcoin isn't, control, isn't Chinese controlled. 65% of the mining is done in China. And it's <laughs> Dwayne Johnson looking back. But the point is that Corey Johnson, it's like almost like a concerted effort to go after Bitcoin and a little bit go after Ethereum. Okay, XRP crypto. Well, Spain's cryptocurrency firms will face new registration requirements under EU driven bill. Crypto to fiat exchanges, crypto exchanges, e wallet, and those who have custody of customers' private keys will be subject to national registrations and regulations. And then he also put this out. South Korea, South Korea economist opposes tough crypto capital gains tax laws and argues that they may jeopardize the emerging cryptocurrency market's overall growth. Cryptocurrencies cannot be considered a universal asset like traditional paper currencies. Okay, so we got a couple of interesting pieces there. Now, XRP Bart sent me this. Sometimes you see a tweet that just kind of says it all. This is David Gokstein or Gokstein. I'm not how he's sure how you pronounce his name, but he says XRP, period. That's it. And I happen to agree with David here. XRP, period. Uh, then Brian Melancholy sent me this. Um, this is an interesting tweet that was tweeted out. This person says XRP News just got this letter in the mail from Bank of America, and I'm jumping out of my skin. Uh, if this isn't proof of CBDC rollout plan, I don't know what it is. So you can look at this, and it says we are making the amendment. Um, it's amendments to your credit card agreement. We're making the amendment uh, because of a change in our business practices, changes to types of transactions. The section titled Types of Transactions has been revised to clarify that cryptocurrency is considered a cash equivalent, treated as a cash advance. So anyway, they are, and then it says included through the use of an enabled mobile device. So for me, the important thing is that, I mean, who would have thought that they would have been mentioned that banks and their paperwork would have been talking about cryptocurrencies just two years ago, who would have thought that? But I think Rob Licker kind of answers this question here. They're charging you cash advance rates, in my opinion, because of default risk. Honestly, I'm shocked banks let anyone buy crypto via CC credit card. Imagine you buy $50,000 worth of Bitcoin and, on, and default. How would they collect? You have an asset beyond confiscation. Um, he makes a good point there. But I think this is one of those just covering their butts uh, papers. But anyway. All right, moving along. Now, Ian Northing sent me this, plans in plans. Up for a second time after appearing as a witness in the House hearing is Christopher Giancarlo, who is also a lawyer for Ripple, works for that William or Gallagher Law, Wilkie. I think it was Wilkie. I'll show you in a second. 
Former chairman of the CFTC, he has been busy splicing the technical details of a digital dollar, one that is informed by DLT. And th this is a Forbes article, but the Forbes article basically tells you about this hearing that's, that's going to come up on June 30th at 10 a.m. This is from the uh, Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs. This is one of their subcommittee, I guess. Um, the digitization of money and payments. And they show you who's going to be there. Um, there's um, Christopher Giancarlo, who is senior counsel at Wilkie Farr and Gallagher. That is the firm that is counsel for Ripple. And then they're going to have this guy, Charles Casarilla, who is CEO and founder of Paxos. And then they've got two professors that are going to be there. Um, well, let's look a little. Let's look at this next thing because Christian Carlo then tweets out. I mean, everything, folks. I've se I've seen so many things for the last two years, and it's funny how all of them kind of piece together when when things like down the road start popping up like this. Watch this. So Christian Carlo, smart forward thinking by Chris Brummer on developing digital dollar CBDC to enhance financial inclusion. It's all connected, folks. So here's Chris Brummer, Brummer um, who's written this Thinking Big on Fed Accounts, Digital Dollars, and Financial Inclusion. It's a Medium article. I went and looked at the Medium article, and the most interesting part to me was when he said this. I could even imagine a digital dollar ecosystem offering services like government-sanctioned digital IDs. You mean like payment IDs? Alternative credit scoring tools and savings programs situated on the t on top of a layer of layer one infrastructure could even be robo advising and financial educated services for low income people. You know where I've read about robo advising when I was on BlackRock's website because remember Robbie Mitchnick left Ripple to go head digital assets at BlackRock. And BlackRock, go to their website. Don't take my word for it. They talk about robo-advising on that website. That's what I thought of when I saw this. But back to Chris Brummer, because you may remember Chris Brummer. I do. Chris Brummer, I think he's a professor at Georgetown Law or something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure he is. But uh, so this was back um, in, this is when he interviewed Brad Garlinghouse at DC's FinTech Week. Um, on October 23rd, 2019, Ripple is opening a DC office. As Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse points out to Chris Brummer, we are continuing to invest in, in uh, clarity of what crypto means. Misinformation is not good for regulators nor the industry. And then here's Brad Garlinghouse tweeting about it. Always a pleasure and certainly no shortage of topics to discuss with Chris Brummer um, at DC FinTech Week, right? So, and then we have this. This is the actual interview. Here's just a short clip you might be interested in. With Ripple focused on providing on-demand liquidity and the world facing what's probably the biggest liquidity crisis ever, what role do you see XRP and XRP Ledger and similar technologies playing in alleviating such a crisis? Well, so if you think about like what causes those kinds of crises, I, one of the dynamics, and by the way, I, there's lots of inputs into a crisis like that. One of them is friction. One of them is time. If you can reduce friction as measured by time and cost, that's good. That's just a, a good thing to minimizing you know, the, the, the risks of uh, liquidity issues. You know, like I, I don't pretend that XRP is a panacea for all of these issues. What I do believe is if we can successfully integrate into the existing system, we're going to more rapidly bring the benefits of these technologies to a much, much, much broader audience than if we try to circumvent the system. So uh, I, I've been incredibly pleased by the engagement we've had, you know, ranging from the IMF to, you know, central banks. Uh, and, you know, look, Ripple's going to continue to work with those players. That's part of why we made the announcements we made this week about expanding or really creating our presence more concretely here in Washington, D.C. And uh, I'm, I'm optimistic that if these technologies continue to propagate across correspondent banking but other industries, that's going to be good for any uh, liquidity crisis. Okay, so that was that's Chris Brummer on stage with Brad Garlinghouse back in 2019. I'm going to finish this video with a with an interesting video that XRP Yo-Yo uh, sent me. Um, watch this. To imply that it simply had enough with, quote, U.S. threats to interfere 
and will now move forward to de-dollarize and strike back against the United States by creating a global currency to compete with the U.S. dollar. China has long considered joining Russia and fighting back against U.S. control of the world's ability to trade or transfer goods without U.S. interference or say-so. But now China is announcing that it's actually preparing to be cut off from the U.S. financial system, and, and, and they're taking what appears to be real steps to protect itself. Why? Or maybe the better question is, why now? Okay. The reason is that while the United States has been heavy-handed in the past, it has never, according to China and Chinese experts and officials, gone so far as to weaponize the U.S. dollar the way that the Trump administration is doing so and threatening to do so now. See, that's why China says that it's doing what it's doing. Even if it shakes up the entire global market, it says it's necessary as a defensive move. One of China's top economic officials seems to be saying that the time for talking is over and now it's time to act. Here's the quote. We have to make preparations early, real preparations, not just psychological preparations. You see, what Fang Xinghai is expressing in that fear is that the Trump administration will do to them what previous administrations have done to Russia with sanctions that have literally locked them out of the world community. What does that mean? Well, what it means is not allowing Russia to exchange goods or currency with other countries. That's a destabilizing thing to do to a country. That type of weaponization of the dollar would be tantamount, figuratively speaking, of course, to an economic nuclear strike, one that would cause unimaginable repercussions, not just in China, but obviously worldwide when China tries to strike back. How serious is the United States about weaponizing the dollar to punish China? How serious and how capable is that seems to If you believe that this digital dollar talk is anything more than a dog and pony show, then I still have that igloo for sale um, that uh, in South Georgia that will melt within 24 hours. But it's such a great igloo. <laughs> I'm going to finish this by reminding you, you can, you can get up to 21% off uh, on these Ledger Nano S families, family packs. I think it's Ledger um, X and Ledger Nano S family packs. They're in the description of every video I do. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that the digital dollar project, in my opinion, is one big political dog and pony show. Thank you for listening.